Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the Pikeville College School of Osteopathic Medicine, class of 2011.
Remain standing for the posting of the colors. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to this historic event, the 11th commencement of the Pipewell College School of Osteopathic Medicine. As president of Pipewell College, I now declare this commencement ceremony in honor of the class of 2011 to be in session. This is a very special occasion in the lives of these graduates, their families, the college, and thousands of families these graduates will serve. We're pleased and honored that you, that you are present with us this morning. <clears throat> I want to thank Mike Cooley for his fine prelude and our Pikeville College ROCT cadets for the posting of the colors. <clears throat> May I invite Cindy Sue to Masters School of Osteopathic Medicine, class of 2011, to lead us in our invocation. Please stand for the invocation. Please let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day, Lord, and just thank you for gathering us together for this uh, momentous celebration, Lord, in which all of us um, have worked the past four years just so hard, Lord, but without you, none of this would be possible. We just praise you and thank you for giving us the ability to study tirelessly, day after day, and work hour after hour, Lord. We just thank you for everything that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for PCSOM. We thank you for Pikeville College. We thank you for our professors and the administration, Lord. But most of all, we thank you for our support system, you, our family, and our friends. We just praise you and thank you for everything that you do for us. Just help us, Lord, take on this new responsibility of caring for others, Lord. Use us as a tool, and just we hope that we can fulfill your will. Uh, be with us as we leave here today. We just praise you and thank you. In your name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Cindy. Let me introduce some of the people on the stage. Uh, Dr. Larry Cease, president of the Kentucky Osteopathic Medical Association. And hold your applause. We have Dr. Darrell Beeler, past president of the American Osteopathic Association. We have Dr. George Thomas, also a past president of the AOA and member of the Board of Trustees of Pikeville College. Senator Benny Ray Bailey, who will receive an honorary degree. Dr. Karen Nichols, our commencement speaker, who will also receive an honorary degree and president of the AOA. We, we got three presidents of AOA on stage. You're a pretty high, high class company, I would say. Dr. Boyd Boozer, the vice president and dean of the Pikeville College School of Osteopathic Medicine. Mr. Terry Dodson, chairman of the board of trustees of Pikeville College. Also on stage, we'd like to recognize a number of people. Our medical school faculty, would you please stand? Medical school faculty. A number of our clinical faculty, would you please stand? Other individuals who assist in hooding the new physicians, please stand. 
and a number of our trustees, Bill Baird, Bill, Jim Booth, Judge Sarah Combs, Dr. Greg Hazlett, Dr. Bob Sparks, Dan Stratton, and I believe that's all of them. Thank you all. Let's recognize these people for their contribution to Bible College. On the inside of the program, there's a brief history of the college and the mission of the medical school. This school is a product of the vision and commitment of many people and organizations uh, which 14 years ago saw the need and the opportunity. A partial listing of several of those individuals and organizations is in the program, but it's only a partial listing. Since 1995-96, well in excess of $14 million in new gifts have been invested in Pikeville College to provide the foundation necessary to do this work. The dream to educate doctors for service in the mountains of Appalachia. The dream is now a reality, and we're grateful and appreciative. This medical school has been a resounding success in virtually every goal we've set for ourselves. We're producing outstanding physicians. Many of them are staying in Appalachia and practicing family medicine. Some are beginning to show their appreciation for the opportunity that we've given them. We've proven that we can do the job, but the job is far from finished. Appalachia is still an underserved area of our country. The need in primary care is still great and will increase as the new federal health care law is implemented. We're preparing for the future. We announced last year a totally new facility for this medical school, which will be state-of-the-art and adequate in size to serve an expanded student class size. And as you can see, if you've been outside, it is well underway and will be completed by this time next year. Our best days are still ahead of us. I made reference uh, earlier to the hooding of new physicians. What is the significance of the hood? The academic hood was originally a functional garment worn to shield the head from the elements. In the English tr tradition, it is developed to an often bright and decorative garment worn only on special occasions. The hood's significance is that it has different colors on it representing the degree in the college. Velvet lining denotes the discipline for the degree. For example, these hoods have green, which represents medicine. It is also lined with two colors of silk, which represent the colors of the college or university, which grants the degree. Black and orange are Bible College's colors. I would like at this time to recognize some very special people who had a strong hand in molding our gradu graduates as caring, responsible people long before they arrived at Bible College. Would the graduating students' parents please stand and be acknowledged? Please stand. They thank you, we thank you. And now the graduating students, spouses, partners, and children, please stand to be acknowledged. We know you're proud. You deserve to be. We're equally pr proud of these new physicians. Now it's my honor to introduce Dr. Boyd Boozer, Vice President of Pipewell College and Dean of the Pipewell School of Pipewell College School of Osteopathic Medicine, Dr. Boozer. Thank you, President Patton, for your thoughtful words. The college is extremely fortunate to have such talented leadership in its president and board of trustees and to have your strong support. 
Your leadership is an inspiration to all of us. Since the first class entered the Pikeville College School of Osteopathic Medicine in 1997, our medical school has graduated over 600 osteopathic physicians. Most have become primary care physicians, but many have also pursued other medical specialties. An impressive percentage of them have opted to practice in medically underserved areas in rural Kentucky and Appalachia, thereby helping us to fulfill our mission and to keep the promise we made when the school was founded. Today, the college will award 66 Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine degrees. A degree in osteopathic medicine is a very special degree. Our profession was established in the 19th century by Andrew Taylor Still, a visionary Midwestern physician. However, many of the principles of osteopathic medicine were recognized by certain enlightened individuals centuries before. Maimonides, the 12th century Jewish sage, noted, the physician should not treat the disease, but the patient who is suffering from it. Much more recently, the famous physician Albert Schweitzer suggested, we doctors do nothing. We only help and encourage the doctor within. Encouraging the doctor within is, in essence, the osteopathic ethic and philosophy. My hope is that the important medical and scientific knowledge you have learned here will be added to your observations, mental, spiritual, and physical, in your treatment of the patient as a whole person. Through your osteopathic education, you have learned that taking the time to listen and learn about the whole patient can affect true healing more than simply treating a disease. I believe that each of you here today understands this philosophy and will leave here to become successful physicians from underserved areas such as rural Kentucky and Appalachia to the highly populated cities of the world. You have committed yourselves to making the world a healthier place for others. So take your hard-earned degree and go out and do something great. And never forget a degree in osteopathic medicine is much more than the accumulation of years of hard work or a fancy piece of parchment. It's a covenant, a pledge to respond deeply to not only the medical needs of your patients, but to their entirety as human beings. We hope your deep connections to service will bring you professional, personal happiness and professional fulfillment. I congratulate you all. And now uh, I'd like to thank uh, President Patton for allowing me to introduce today's commencement speaker. In July 2010, the American Osteopathic Association installed Karen J. Nichols, D.O., a board-certified internal medicine specialist, as its 114th president as well as its first female president. This, this represents the latest and most prestigious accomplishment in a career marked by leadership at every level. Dr. Nichols began her career as a medical technologist at Phoenix General Hospital. After serving as chief technologist and president of the Arizona Medical Technology Society, she sought her next career challenge by beginning medical school at age 28. And Dr. Nichols earned her osteopathic medical degree at what is now the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences College of Osteopathic Medicine, where, incidentally, she was a classmate of our own senior associate dean, Dr. Bill Betts. She completed her internship and internal medicine residency training at the former osteopathic, uh, Oklahoma Osteopathic Hospital in Tulsa. After entering practice, Dr. Nichols worked her way up to chief of staff at Mesa General Hospital in Arizona. And after 17 years of excellent patient care, Dr. Nichols made another career change in 2002 when she became dean of the Midwestern University Chicago College of Osteopathic Medicine in Downers Grove, Illinois, a position from which she is currently on leave performing her AOA presidential duties. 
Dr. Nichols has been a member of the AOA since 1981 and a member of the AOA Board of Trustees since 1999. She is also a former chair of the AOA Department of Governmental Affairs and the AOA Council on Palliative Care Issues, along with numerous other leadership posts. Aside from her AOA responsibilities, Dr. Nichols has served as a member of the Board of Trustees for the Institute of, for National Health Policy Review, as president of the American College of Osteopathic Internists, president of the Arizona Osteopathic Medical Association, and in many other leadership positions, too numerous to mention. And Dr. Nichols has received many honors and awards over the years. To name just a few, a fellow of the Institute of Medicine in Chicago, the first Arizona Osteopathic Medical Association Physician of the Year, the AOA Mentor Hall of Fame inductee, recipient of the Illinois Osteopathic Medical Society Distinguished Service Award, and the Clinician of the Year from Mesa General Hospital, as well as numerous honorary degrees. Dr. Nichols' tenure as AOA president has been marked by outstanding communication, a focus on enhancing the profession's st strategic planning process, and an unfailing commitment to teamwork. She has advocated tirelessly for our profession in the U.S. and around the world. In fact, she just returned Wednesday from Geneva, Switzerland, where she represented all of us at the World Health Assembly, the annual meeting of the World Health Organization. I'm proud to call her a colleague and a true friend. Please welcome the 114th President of the American Osteopathic Association, Karen J. Nichols, D.O. Thank you. So graduates, I bet you thought you were done taking tests for a while. Well, I've got one more for you. Eight questions, two sections, four questions a section. Uh, all of you can take the test. You can count them on your fingers. You can give yourselves partial credit. Okay, question number one. Name the last three winners of the NCAA Men's Basketball Finals. Number two, name the last three Miss Americas. Number three, name the last three Vice Presidents of the United States. Sarah Palin doesn't count. Uh, and the next one might be a little easier for you based on recent events. Uh, Queen Elizabeth II has four children. Can you name three of them? Okay, how many of you got 100%? 75? 50? Okay, try the next section. Who were the first three people that you called on September 11, 2001, after 9.45 a.m.? Who were the first three people who called you? Who were the three people who most influenced you to go into medical school, an osteopathic medical school? And who are the people that you call when you've got a really tough case? How many of you got 100% on that? That's what I thought. So what's the difference? Those first people and events were famous. They were in the media for, for weeks, if not months. Well, of course, you know the difference. They don't care about you, and you don't really care about them, or you would have remembered. That's my message for you today. Being an excellent osteopathic physician is about caring for your patients. Francis Peabody said, the secret of caring for your patient is caring for your patient. Now, I don't mean to diminish your body of knowledge that you have learned. You are going to outstanding residency positions. You are the most highly trained physicians in the world today. But we hope that you have learned much more. Dr. Jean Gray said, caring is the foundation of treatment. The cure is just a bonus. So let me give you three examples of the types of aspects of caring that I'm talking about. I was a third year medical student, as Dr. Boozer said, with Dr. Betts 
at the Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences. And my third year rural rotation was in Joplin, Missouri. And I'll never forget a woman who came into the emergency room on her own power, barely making it, and I worked with the cardiologist to determine that she had a massive heart attack. And after we worked on her aggressively for several hours, she passed away. And I walked with him as we went back to tell the family. And there was her husband and her three sons standing around us. And he said, Mrs. X came in. She had a very bad heart attack. And I'm sorry to tell you, she's deceased. And he shook hands around and left. And they stood there in stunned silence, as I did. And the husband slowly turned to me and said, but is she going to make it? They didn't know what the word deceased meant. And I swore then that I would always work to be sure that I was properly communicating with my patients. You have wonderful examples of communication before you at this school. You're wonderful faculty. And I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the absolutely outstanding dean that you have, Dr. Boozer, and a paragon of communication and a wonderful leader in the osteopathic profession. The second story I want to tell you is about a new patient that I came to see in my practice in Arizona. And I took the, the little chart off the door to walk in in my office, and it was a name I didn't know. And this woman was sitting on the table in the room, and she jumped off, and she grabbed me around the shoulders and gave me a big bear hug. And uh, I, I said, oh, do I know you? And she said, no, no, I know you don't remember me. But she said, you took care of my mom about 10 years ago. You came in late at night in the hospital, and, you, and she was cold, and she was shivering. And you went and got a warm blanket, and you tucked her in like a little kid. And she warmed up, and she relaxed. And I said, if I ever have a chance to become your patient, I would do so. And I'm not telling you that story to tell you what a wonderful physician I am, but to tell you the, the importance of having empathy with, with your patient. And that is different than sympathy. Sympathy is how you feel about the patient. Empathy is understanding how the patient feels about being a patient, another very important part of caring. And the third story comes from another genre. Daniel Shore was, would be considered one of the premier journalists in the United States. He just uh, died very recently. And when he started in journalism, he said, he went to his editor and he said, what do I have to do to be a really good journalist? And the editor said, oh, it, it's very simple. You just have to be sincere. Because if you're not sincere when you talk to the person you're interviewing, you're not going to get the real story. And if you're not sincere when you write that story and report on it, you're not going to communicate the, the important aspects. Sincerity, that's the key. When you can learn to fake that, you'll be fine. And of course you can't. Your patients, studies have shown, make the decision about whether they trust you in the first 18 seconds of seeing you as a patient. So all the things that are on your wall, all of the parchment is not going to impress them. And don't let it impress you either. And I will tell you, you are going to look too young to be considered a physician. Now, I can also let you know that that's not going to be a problem you're going to have as long as you would like. <laughs> but your youthful appearance will be overcome by the fact that you have learned to care for your patients. And that learning just goes on. An old adage says, half of everything you learned in the last five years is obsolete. The problem is you don't know which half. Winston Churchill put it best. He said, this is not the end. This isn't even the beginning of the end. This commencement is the end of the beginning. You are going to have a new last name today. 
Dio. Be proud of that name. I must admit, as an ICU-based internist, when I graduated from my residency, I didn't think I was going to be looking at things from an osteopathic point of view and doing manipulation, but my patients demanded otherwise. You have a wonderful heritage. This school, you as the 11th class, are joining a long line of wonderful osteopathic physicians that understand professionalism. You need to support this school. You need to join your state association, your specialty association, and your AOA. Those are the professional obligations of an osteopathic physician. So reflect back on those questions. You know the difference between those questions. It was summed up by my wonderful, old, crusty, ob -gyn professor in Kansas City who said, your patients don't care what you know till they know that you care. So we're here today to dedicate 66 minds, 66 pairs of hands, and what's ahead of you is so big. It's scary. As you move through the rest of your career, sometimes it is going to be absolutely overwhelming. But we're sending out 66 hearts dedicated to service of humankind. But it's OK. You're ready. Congratulations, class of 2011. Thank you, Dr. Nichols. Your presence and your presentation have added significantly to the importance of this occasion. Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Osteopathic Medicine, I have the honor to present to you Dr. Karen J. Nichols, candidate for the honorary degree Doctor of Osteopathic Education. You've heard the introduction of Dr. Nichols, and now you've heard her inspirational message. It's obvious that Dr. Nichols is worthy of this recognition. So therefore, Karen Nichols, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Pikeville College, I hereby confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine. Bible College is honored to have Dr. Nichols as an honorary alumnus of the institution. Mr. President, as Dean of the School of Osteopathic Medicine, it is my honor to present Benny Ray Bailey, candidate for the honorary degree Doctor of Laws. I get to say a little bit something here first. You know, some people are so special to a college that the college honors them with an honorary degree, an honorary doctoral degree, a symbol of the highest level of achievement in an intellectual field. Some few people are so appreciated by the college that the college bestows upon them a second honorary doctoral degree. That is what Pible College is doing today, granting to Senator Benny Ray Bailey a second honorary degree show our appreciation for his service to our medical school. From day one, he was there. When we sent the delegation to Chicago, I think about 1996, to convince the AOA to grant us permission to, be, to establish the School of Osteopathic Medicine, it was not a foregone conclusion. In fact, at the time, it was a rather radical approach going to a rural area, a small liberal arts college, and permitted them to st establish a medical school. That the permission would be granted was certainly not uh, an obvious conclusion. But that delegation included, as I remember, Bill, Dr. Bill Owens, the president of the college at the time, Chad Perry, uh, Berlin Coleman, and some others. Uh, and uh, I was there as governor of Kentucky, and Senator Benny Ray Bailey, one of the leaders of the Kentucky General Assembly. 
And when the governor and a major leader in the Kentucky General Assembly said, we will make it happen, I believe that was the turning point. And I believe that that is what convinced the AOA to have confidence in our ability to pull off what was a pretty tall order. The program has a more detailed listing of Senator Bailey's many accomplishments and a narrative about his authorship and sponsorship of the osteopathic medical scholarship legislation. But I want to tell you the rest of the story. During the 1998 session of the Kentucky General Assembly, the medical school was just getting started and Senator Bailey came to my office and said, Governor, why don't we use some of the coal severance tax uh, money to equalize the medical school's tuition for Kentucky students to that of the average of the University of Kentucky and the University of Louisville's medical school's tuitions. I responded, as I recall, Senator, you know we can't get that kind of a legislation passed. And he replied, you put it in the budget and you pass it in the House and I'll pass it in the Senate. After a day or two thinking about it, I realized that it was a really good idea and we might just pull it off. After all, I'd always take the position that you don't get anything you don't ask for and if you get everything you ask for, you probably didn't ask for enough. So I did put the proposal in my budget and with Senator Bailey's and others' help, we did pass it in the House and I believe without a dissenting vote. Of course, that wasn't, doesn't mean it will pass in the Senate, but it did, again, without a dissenting vote. That is what leadership is all about and showed the respect that the other members of the General Assembly had for Senator Benny Ray Bailey. <clears throat> to recount the hundreds of other initiatives that have benefited Kentucky and specifically Eastern Kentucky would be impossible. <clears throat> But it's no exaggeration to say that our region has been changed fundamentally and for the better because Senator Bailey served us for about 20 years. It embarrasses me to admit that my attempt to bestow credit on him for being a servant of all of Eastern Kentucky was distorted by the political process and resulted in his leaving public service. However, his contribution to Eastern Kentucky and to Pieville College can never be discounted or ignored. It's with a feeling of great personal pride that I bestow on behalf of Pieville College the degree of Doctor of Laws on Senator Benny Ray Bailey. So therefore, Senator Benny Ray Bailey, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Pieville College, I hereby confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Laws. Honored to have Senator Benny Ray Bailey, Dr. Benny Ray Bailey, as a uh, alumnus of our institution, which he also attended. Benny, you want to say a couple words? Sure. Never ask a politician if he wants to say a few words. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman Dotson. <clears throat> you know, for a, a little fellow from <clears throat> spewing Cal Pala over on left Beaver Creek, it's quite an honor. George Goble once said he felt like the whole world was a tuxedo and he was a pair of brown shoes. I know how he felt. Fifteen years ago, I accompanied Governor Patton, Bill Owens, Howard Feinberg, Berlin Coleman, and others to Chicago to appeal to the AOA for a new medical school in Pikeville. At that meeting, I told the AOA that as long as America had a compassionate governor, that paid for some access and some services, we would always have physicians in Pikeville, in Ashland, in Prestonsburg, in Middlesbrough, in London. But they will never be our sons and daughters unless we have our own medical school. Today, as we celebrate the 11th commencement of this medical school, I can say that there will be physicians in East Kentucky that are the sons and daughters of coal miners and school teachers and small business people and working men throughout America in these mountains. In 1998, I proposed legislation that the governor mentioned that would take money from the coal severance tax and equalize the tuition between any accredited school of osteopathic medicine in Kentucky 
and what the students were paying at UK and U of L. Of course, there was only one osteopathic medical school in Kentucky. I remember the governor saying, as he said, can you pass it? I said, I'll pass it in the Senate. He said, well, I got some friends in the House. And he pretty much guaranteed me that the governor would sign it if the legislature would pass it. The unique thing about this legislation that you folks ought to know is that during the committee meeting in the House, the committee meeting in the Senate, the floor of the House and the floor of the Senate, nobody voted no on that legislation. 100% Democrats and Republicans voted yes to pass that legislation. To fund the program, as the governor said, we took money from the coal severance tax, a million dollars a year from the coal severance tax to fund your education. Let me say this to the graduates. A few years from now, when you've completed your residency and you're out working, and these old coal blackened, broken down coal miners come to your office, shake his hand or her hand, and thank them for allowing you the opportunity to become a physician. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Will the candidates for the Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine please rise? Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you the members of the class of 2011 who are candidates for this degree. I hereby certify that these candidates have met all of the requirements established by the faculty for the degree which the college awards and have been recommended by the faculty and the Board of Trustees. The candidates are now ready to receive their degrees. By the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Pible College, I hereby confer upon each of you the degree of Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine together with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. You are now officially graduates of the Pipewell College School of Osteopathic Medicine. <laughs> Will the graduates please be seated. Ali George Abueta, hooded by Isa Abueta, J.D. Natalie Sonderman Adams, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. Kelly Marie Airy, hooded by Joanne Airy, MD. <laughs> Emily Ruth Bailey, hooded by Michael Diatley, PhD. Adrian Clint Banks, hooded by Randy Littman, D.O. Brooke M. Beeler, hooded by Bryant R. Beeler, D.O. and Daryl A. Beeler, D.O.
Julie N. Bernstein, hooded by Michael D. Atley, Ph.D. Vale Michael Brennan, hooded by Lawrence Vale Brennan, M.D. Angela Dawn Byron, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. Samuel Hugh Byron, hooded by Angela Dawn Byron, D.O. Jessica Arnett Campagna, hooded by Patricia F. Arnett, D.O. <laughs> Veronica Lindsay Caudle, hooded by James Dustin Cheney, D.O. Amanda K. Cummins, hooded by Carlos Sanera, M.D. Brian Patrick Daniels, hooded by Michael D. Atley, Ph.D. <laughs> Cindy Sue Damastus, hooded by Sammy Moore, Farm D. Daniel Charles DeRosa, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. <laughs> Andrew Dittenhofer, hooded by Michael D. Atley, Ph.D. Jera Fatima, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. <laughs> La Viesta Lashan Farrell, hooded by Michael D. Atley, Ph.D.
Robert L. Flowers, Jr., hooded by Robert L. Flowers, D.O. Gary Nicholas Francis, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. <laughs> Nina Mary George, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. Andrea Gilbert Jelinek, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. <laughs> Joshua Sean Godsey, hooded by Michael Diatley, Ph.D. Melissa Dunaway Haddix, hooded by James Dustin Cheney, D.O. <laughs> Patrick Raymond Haydorn, hooded by Carlos Sonera, M.D. Jonathan A. Hatton, hooded by Michael Diatley, Ph.D. <laughs> Danielle Luther Henson, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. Jessica Lynn Ketchman, hooded by Alan Peck, M.D. <laughs> Sana Khan, hooded by Tamina Khan, M.D. Bruce Joseph Kostelnik, hooded by Lauren Kostelnik, D.O. Aaron Michael Lawrence, hooded by Michael Diatley, Ph.D. <laughs> J. 
Dwayne Likens, hooded by William Ratliff, DMD. Brent J. McDaniel, hooded by Randy Littman, D.O. <laughs> Caroline Amanda McDonald, hooded by Robert Sparks, D.M.D. Leah McKnight Haas, hooded by James Foster, Ph.D. John Patrick McLaughlin, hooded by James John Stephen McLaughlin, DDS. <laughs> Dawn Marie Meacham, hooded by Carlos Sonera, MD. Jeremy Clint Moore, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. Dane Morgan Newell, hooded by Dick J. Newell, D.O. Wanda Noble, hooded by James Dustin Cheney, D.O. <laughs> Angela Marie O'Quinn, hooded by Kyra Osborne, M.D. Robin McHale Polly, hooded by Michael Diatley, Ph.D. <laughs> Rebecca Elise Popham, hooded by Carlos Sonera, M.D. Casey Joseph Prather, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. <laughs> D. 
Deborah Jane Price, hooded by Michael Diatley, Ph.D. <clears throat> Delano Leitner Proctor IV, hooded by Melanie Proctor, D.O. Iram Naz Qureshi, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. Amanda Louisa Ramey, hooded by Michael Diatley, Ph.D. <laughs> David Andrew Reynolds, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. Brandon Keith Rose, hooded by Richard B. Mayer II, D.O. <laughs> Tasha M. Russell, hooded by Michael D. Atley, Ph.D. Jonathan Earl Sarziot, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. <laughs> Emily Boykin Saul, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. Elizabeth Ray Saylor, hooded by Roy Lucas, Ph.D. <clears throat> Ryan Singerman, hooded by Jerome Dixon, D.O. Byron Lane Stapleton, hooded by Dick J. Newell, D.O. Joseph Wells Tortorich, hooded by Carlos Sonera, M.D.
Hamid Omar Touré, hooded by Abdul Touré, PhD. Teresa E. Vasterling, hooded by Ashley Ladner, Farm D. John Nicholas Vitale, hooded by Randy Lippman, D.O. Holly Delena Von Grinnigan, hooded by Carlos Sonera, MD. James Brandon Watson, hooded by Michael Diatley, PhD. Derek Williams, hooded by Patricia F. Arnett, D.O. <laughs> Stephen P. Wiseman, hooded by Carlos Sonera, M.D. Anitha Yalamanchi, hooded by Swathi Yalamanchi, MD. Let's take a deep breath. Would the class of 2011 please stand and repeat after me the osteopathic oath. As delineated in the booklet. Repeat after me. I do hereby affirm my loyalty to the profession I am about to enter. I will be mindful always of my great responsibility to preserve the health and the life of my patients, to retain their confidence and respect, both as a physician and a friend. Who will, who will guard their secrets with scrupulous honor and fidelity to perform faithfully my professional duties, to, my professional duties. to employ only those recognized methods of treatment, consistent with good judgment and with my skill and ability. 
keeping in mind always nature's laws and the body's inherent capacity for recovery. I will be ever vigilant in aiding in the general welfare of the community, sustaining its laws and institutions, not engaging in those practices which will in any way bring shame or discredit upon myself or my profession. I will give no drugs for deadly purposes to any person, though it may be asked of me. I will endeavor to work in accord with my colleagues in a spirit of progressive cooperation And never, and never by word or by act cast imputations upon them or their rightful practices. I will look with respect and esteem upon all those who have taught me my art to my college I will, be loyal. My college, I will be loyal and strive always for its best interests and for the interest of the students who will come after me. I will be ever alert to further the application of basic biologic truths to the healing arts and to develop the principles of osteopathy which were first enunciated by Andrew Taylor Still. You may be seated. Thank you, Dean Betts. Members of the class of 2011, please rise. Sit down. Stand up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Before I officially present you as a class of new osteopathic physicians, I want you all to turn around, find your families in the audience, and show them your appreciation for all the love and support they've given you during this arduous journey by giving them a very deserved round of applause. Well done, well done. You have distinguished yourselves as a class of leaders. You have performed admirably during your years here and have enhanced the reputation of our fine school of osteopathic medicine. You have now joined a proud profession, one that values the relationship between physician and patient, that seeks health in our patients, and that recognizes that a person's state of health depends on the body, mind, and spirit. As you begin your careers as doctors of osteopathic medicine, I challenge you to continue as leaders in your profession and in your community. Doctors of osteopathic medicine are the most completely trained physicians in the world. Be true and loyal to your school, remembering that this school gave you the chance to realize your dreams. You may be leaving us physically, but you will always be a part of our family. Take pride in your accomplishments. You will go forward now as osteopathic physicians, and as Dr. A.T. still said, no finer title can follow a person's name. And now, it gives me great pleasure to present the newest physicians in the United States, the members of the Pikeville College School of Osteopathic Medicine class of 2011.
Go crazy. <laughs> And now I would like to call to the podium Dr. Jeremy Clint Moore, president of the PCSOM class of 2011. Uh, that sounded good. <laughs> good morning. I'd like to begin by giving you a short history of medicine. 2000 BC, here, eat this root. 1000 BC, that root is heathen, say this prayer. 1850, that prayer is superstition, drink this elixir. 1900, that elixir is snake oil, swallow this pill. 1960, that pill is ineffective, take this antibiotic. And today that antibiotic is artificial. Here, eat this root. <laughs> <laughs> Just like this history, we've come full circle. The journey to this place has been different for each of us, but collectively, I know we've, know we've come a long way. We've read countless books, studied countless hours, and forgotten countless facts. We've made sacrifices big and small, sleepless nights, time away from loved ones, and debt so large that we believe that might only be repaid with monopoly money. Whatever our story, we've all striven to do our best, the best we know how, to reach this point. Here we are. So how did we get here? How far have we come? Do we measure by years studying, pages read, titles bestowed? If by year we're eight past high school, some of us a little more, and I'm sure everybody here knows how long we've been in school, especially parents and spouses. What about books we've read? How many pages have we turned? We'd say too many. Some of our early patients, and many of you, will think not enough. And I'd say both sentiments are probably true. And even today, we've been granted the title of Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine. And in a month, we'll be interns. How quickly the glory fades. But none of these tell the story of our education because our education began years ago, not in schools or universities, but our homes, with our families, and our experiences that shaped our character. We've certainly been taught many things in the last four years. We, hopefully, can diagnose disease, prescribe the latest, greatest pharmaceutical, tow you Charcot's triad, or maybe Reynolds Pentad, but we can't forget our other education. We weren't taught in a classroom how to share joy or return a genuine smile, Neither can we understand the truth of compassion until others demonstrate love for us. And even grief and pain, which many of us have known here, weren't first encountered at Pikeville. These lessons can't be bought with tuition dollars. A kind word or a few extra minutes of our time can truly be the difference to many patients. It's been said that 10 cents worth of human understanding equals $10 worth of medical science. And this is not said to diminish the value of our education or the need to always actively pursue knowledge. Let us not forget it has also been said, it is astonishing with how little reading a doctor can practice medicine, but it is not astonishing how badly he may do it. But what is a physician? What are we becoming? The guy with the stethoscope? What about the lady who gives shots? The person who pops in at 4.30 in the morning to wake you from a dead sleep to ask you how you feel? Now that's the medical student. The doctor comes in at 6 and asks you the same thing. <laughs> I'd say the doctor is all of these things and more. We're not only called upon to deliver our services to the sick and suffering, but are looked upon in communities to be pillars and examples. Physicians aren't respected only for their medical expertise, but also for their dedication and service to people. But, but I have to ask, have we made the right choice? As students, we've all heard the grumblings from established physicians, whether they'd do it again, asking do we know what we've gotten ourselves into, fear over health care changes and shrinking salaries, what about the malpractice crisis and endless paperwork? Our looming debt, will our calling be what we idealized or something less? I say no, and I'm going to quote the former Dean of Student Affairs of a Harvard Medical School. How absurd. It stands the world on its head to suggest that the liabilities of a career in medicine outweigh the assets. 
to lose sight of just how lucky we are to have a profession in which we do well for ourselves by doing well for others reflects a puzzling loss of perspective. Indeed. And this is not to deny that there are challenges that we must face, but these are to be embraced. We are not the first to face adversity, and our profession is the ultimate calling to serve, not selfishly, but without constraint, fueled by compassion, to nurture those in need. What a gratifying living to help others every single day. Make no mistake, it will always be an honor to be a DO. And finally, I'd like to close by saying thank you on behalf of the class of 2011. This has truly been a wonderful, joyful, painful, and remarkable experience. Thank you, Pikeville College, for the opportunity to learn and grow, however grand or meager it may appear. Thank you, teachers, for your guidance and instruction, however impressively or poorly we may have received it. Thank you, administration and staff, for your work and effort, often unnoticed and unappreciated, but always essential. Thank you, family and friends, for your faith and support. We needed every bit of it. And thank God we finally made it. Thank you. Student Dr. John T. McNary School of Osteopathic Medicine, class of 2013, will sing My Old Kentucky Home. He'll be accompanied by Mike Cooley, as is our custom in Kentucky. Would you please stand? Dr. Bruce Joseph Kostelnik, School of Osteopathic Medicine, class of 2011, will provide us a benediction. Good morning. Fellow classmates, doctors, let us pray. Our most graciously, Heavenly Father, we have been gathered here today to celebrate the accomplishments of so many, and thank you for your love and guidance over the past four years. We are so thankful for the friendships made, relationships built, and the love we have found on, on this journey. Father, we thank you for your children, for our children, husbands, wives, parents, professors, and friends who have loved us, supported us, encouraged us, 
counseled us, and always extended a helping hand in times of need. Loving Lord, we are so very thankful that you have guided us on this worthy path to help, to heal, to touch the lives of so many of your people. Lord, we come in your presence today to seek your grace so that we may conduct ourselves in this ministry and that we may be acceptable in your sight. Lead us and guide us to be swift in our service and let your presence be with us in whatever field we enter. Lead us all with confidence into this new chapter in our lives. We pray that you bless this school as it continues to grow and produce caring, compassionate osteopathic physicians. As we leave here today to begin the next step in our lives, continue to watch over us and see us safely through today and the tomorrows. In Jesus' name, amen. The commencement ceremony for Pikeville College School of Osteopathic Medicine is now concluded. I'd ask that everyone remain standing while the procession, uh, for the processional march as we march out of the arena before you leave your seats. And then please join us for a reception in the lobby after the ceremony. It's been a good day. Thank you.